Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the video. So here today, finally, we're hitting up the second part of our console ID series for the PS3. Now in the first part, and I'll put a link in the description, we covered just general information about the PS3 console ID, as well as uh, the truths and myths and lies and all that stuff about console generators. So if you haven't seen that, uh, go ahead and watch that one. That one covers that information. And if you want to know more about console ID generators, uh, that one pretty much focuses on that. So this here today is going to cover, of course, the SID stealing. But guys, it's not just that. We are really going to cover the security of your PS3 in general and how your SID being stolen might actually be the least of your problems. And what may has happened to your system already is happening to your system or could happen to your system is what we're going to cover and this is stuff that I'm pretty much sure 99.999% like of you um, are not even aware of. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. Let's get started. Alright guys, so SID stealing of course happens when somebody takes your console ID and you know they'll take it so that they can either post it up in some public forum or something somewhere and other people can use it they just do it just to be you know total dicks or um, they use it for themselves to you know get themselves unbanned but usually the vast majority of the time and almost always they take it so that they can profit from it and they steal your console ID SID stealing is rampant and here's the thing just because you haven't been banned doesn't mean it hasn't happened to you your console ID could be sitting inside of the servers of multiple people or inside the PCs of multiple people and you have no idea um, and, and you won't um, ever because there's no nothing to indicate that your console ID has been stolen but it's possible that it's been stolen multiple times so here we have I made I put together this little uh, elementary school Mickey Mouse thing here real quick um, so here we have your PS and you know your PS3 SID which we talked about in the last video as well and a lot of you are, you know, when it comes to SID stealing, this is, of course, what you're worried about. But in reality, you should be worried about something that's way worse than this, which is this file here. I know that 99.999999% of you have no idea what this file is. And this is the first time that you've probably ever seen it. Quote, unquote, all you modders out there, guaranteed you've never talked about this, you've never seen this. In the beginning, when PS3 modding happened, um, developers war had warned people about this and uh, nobody ever listened. Every now and then, I still see developers, you know, warn about this, nobody ever listens. So, you know, the developers and whatnot just gave up because nobody ever listens. This is way worse than your PS3 console ID. If we open up the uh, PS3 developer wiki site here, and we go to the X registry sys page so you can see what this file is all about. This file is the PS3 system registry. It's used to store settings uh, like PSN account details, user details, um, devices that are attached to your PS, your HDD model, serial number, and a shitload of other stuff. If you ever use the PS3 to uh, purchase something at the PSN store and you chose to have your credit card saved, uh, then there is a high probability that this is where the number has been stored at. Not to mention, on top of that, you have your PSN registration info, like your date of birth, right there. You have your PSN password right there. You have your PSN login slash email there. And your PSN account ID is also located in this file. If those two things weren't bad enough, your PSN account ID and your credit card info, here's like the cherry on the cake, really. Here is your... Uh, your wireless access point WPA and WEP keys, which are your passwords, are right here. They're stored here too. And here is the SSID of your home network, which is, you know, the name, the name of your home network. So basically, with this information, we can get in. I shouldn't say we because my days of hacking are over. I did this way back in the late 90s, uh, turn of the century with sub seven look it up but anyway the way these hackers get in is um, is you know once they have this they can get in through your you know through your um, network and then everything in your network can be compromised uh, from your phones to PCs tablets whatever as easy as it would be to take something out 
they can put something in. And I'm not even going to cover all the damage that can be done and the things that they can do. And once they're in, they can move in and out freely. They really don't want you to know that they're there because they can just do whatever they want. Um, it might take a little bit of work, but trust me, it's not that difficult at all. So how is how are these files getting in? How, you know, well, not how are they getting into your PS3 to take out these files? Well, with PCs, we see this .exe extension, which is an executable. We know these executable files are notorious for worms, viruses, malware, and all this stuff. The PS does not use Windows, and so it doesn't use .exes, but it does use executables, and they're just as bad as an .exe file, if not worse. They're known as .bins, and more specifically, eboot.bins. Every eboot that you see is an executable, hence the E in the eboot. They're all executable files, and when an eboot gets into your PS3, it has pretty much unrestricted, unrestricted, unlimited access to anything it wants in your system. Not only eBoots can do this, but a Sprix file can do this, RTM tools can do this. And by the way, all RTM tools that I haven't used them in years, the last ones that I had looked at all steal console IDs at the very least, and some stole the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, X registry sys as well. Um, but they all stole console IDs. So stay away from every single one of them. Strix menus, they're hit or miss. However, the paid ones are a hit all the time because the paid ones take your shit all the time. Last year, and this is a chart that I made for 2016, and I started making this chart in June because I was suspicious that people who were using paid menus were getting banned more than like anybody else. I remember... I. Once it passes 60 days on eBay, I can't, I can't go back, um, so I, I didn't have the information here. But I know that there were two people that, um, that for sure had paid menus, and I don't know about the rest. But two for sure did, so that's why I marked them here. Then I went back and I backtracked the dates. Basically, if somebody told me they had a paid menu, whether it was to Black Ops 2 or GTA, I would put an X here for yes. So paid menu, X means yes. And if they didn't tell me anything, I would just ask them, hey, are you using paid menus? I'm thinking about using it, whatever. Of course, I wasn't, but it was just to probe, just to get some information. And pretty much people would respond. So if you take a look here, out of these 27 entries, two of them never responded. So if we eliminate those two out of 27, we're left with 25 entries. Take a look at how many had paid menus. There was one that stated that they were using free menus. 24 out of 25 had paid menus. When I started in the fall looking at, I got my um, Visual, uh, Microsoft Visual Studio and SDK and stuff, and I started decompiling these Sprix menus. Sure enough, pretty much every single paid one was stealing the console ID, but what was worse was that they were going after your X registry sys file as well. And I may make a video about that to show you how to do that, but We'll see, uh, because it's kind of complex. Anyway, so 24 out of 25 had paid menus. If like 8 were free and 10 were paid and it was somewhat balanced, I could say, well, it's equal amounts. It's not equal. 1 against 24. This tells you that the paid ones are all stealing your console ID. Right? So these eBoots and these uh, and these Sprix files, of course, you're getting them from the forums. You're getting them from all these... Uh, all these YouTube sites, and many times the hackers themselves are posing as modders, and they're putting up their own shit on their channels and on forums so you can use it. Then a month or two will pass, they'll change up the menu, make it look different, slap a different name on it, add one or two features, and you think it's a different menu so you can try it. That way they can get more people and you know more, um, uh, more files, then they can take out more SIDs, uh, more X registry uh, sys files or whatever. And so, yeah, that's the kind of like scam they have going. Is it like that for everybody? No. But a lot of these people who don't know what they're doing are putting up these menus and testing them. They put up the e-boots and stuff, and they have no idea what they contain. Even worse is that sometimes these, these people will post up uh, updates to certain you know programs and apps like um, PSN Patch or Webman Mod or Multiman. They'll post it up. 
but what they'll do first is that they'll go ahead and what they'll do is they'll um, decompile the package file which is what I did right here this is PSN patch they go in it okay into the USR DIR folder they'll take the eboot they'll go here and they'll just extract the elf which I've already done once you've extracted the elf all you need to do is you know open it with your hex and you can start typing in here whatever the hell you want you know you can start adding the the code that you want once it's done they can just you know recompile the eboot they can put the package back together they can test it make sure it's okay then they'll put it up on send space media fire they'll put it up somewhere that the developer did not put it up and then you're downloading it from them when you use this app which on the surface looks like a legit app because it's PSN patch it's multi-man whatever um, it works and everything seems to be working fine but what you don't know is that in the background the eboot that they modified is taking your shit and you have no idea that's why you need to download only from the reputable sites um, that the developers themselves use and don't download shady stuff you know only download the programs that are out there and that are known and that are mainstream like PSM patch like send enabler like rebug toolbox multi-man webman mod and stuff like that uh, PS3 Brewology is a good place and of course PSX place is another one just because it says PS3 or PS4 or whatever in the title of the web page doesn't mean it's a safe site I've seen it time and time again where moderators I'm like what are these moderators fucking doing they don't know their head from their ass they just post anything they let people post whatever in the forums they don't check them they don't do anything and yeah and before you know it you're you're you know you're putting something in your system that can compromise not just your SID, but as I've shown you before, your whole entire home network. In the next video, we're going to talk about more specifically what's getting you banned, which kind of has something to do with this. So we're going to talk about that in detail, and um, and you know what are the chances of you getting banned? What exactly is causing bans? Um, you know the is there a pattern to getting banned and all that stuff so we're gonna focus on the act of getting banned itself in the next video and if you want to ever clear out your PS3 and you know start from the beginning my advice take your PS3 back down to 3.55 OFW so your system can get dehashed install CFW and then install only the reputable apps from the places where the developers put the links up at and then just install only that avoid RTM tools avoid paid menus and avoid all these eboots and Sprix files that are floating around. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. Sorry it was so long. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.